Good morning, good morning. Hey, we wait till a couple of people join the scope on today. Good morning, John. Good morning, Mo. Good morning. Good morning, Cherie. I'm good. How about yourself? Good morning. It is Sunday. You're welcome. Good morning. Amazing. 50, 52. Good morning. Today is Sunday. It is August the 30th. And it's a beautiful day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Our scripture reading today is going to come from Romans. Romans the 15th chapter. Starting at the first verse ending at the 13th verse so if you have a Bible near you feel free to follow along we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification for even Christ pleased not himself but as it is written the reproaches of them that reproached fell on reproached thee fell on me for whatsoever things were written for a time were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, John. I saw you pop up there when I started reading. Good morning. Um, it's titled here, Practices of Christian Liberty. But it's, it's uh, things that we ought to do one towards another. First verse is, we then are strong, that are strong, bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Um, now we live in a society where we just, those that are weaker than us, we um, <coughs> um, basically eat our young. We don't live in a society that believe in building up others that are weaker than us or helping others at all. We feel like because I've come this way, if they can't get it on their own, they won't have it. Um, and it's a, a, an awful thing to be in a church as well, that we ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, not just uh, to encourage them and to lift them up, but we ought to be praying for them, fasting for them, um, forgiving them. When, when you have someone give their life to Christ and they keep falling into the same uh, habits that they had before they committed themselves. It's not for us to condemn them and throw them away. It's not up to us to get tired of them coming back and forth, coming back and forth. I remember there's one minister that used to come to our church all the time and it would be like, you know, I mean, from the time I was a teenager, he'd come, he'd cry, and he'd be there for a minute and then he'll get locked up or he'll come and cry and he'd be back on drugs. And it would be like that on and off every few years. He'll come back, come back, come back. And uh, one time he came back and he actually stayed. He stayed, he got married, he began to minister. And so it's not for us to say how many times someone can come back uh, or how many times someone can mess up. Because honestly, those of us that's been in the Lord any time, we know we messed up. We may not share it. Uh, it may not even be with drugs. It may not even be with uh, fornication or promiscuity, but we have uh, um, sinned in, uh, with our tongue. We've gossiped. We backbite. We have bitterness and unforgiveness. Those things that people can't see that uh, 
that we have to deal that we are dealing with so when you um, grow in the grace and the admonition and the knowledge of the Lord it's not for us to leave those others left behind we are to bear the infirmities of the weak we are to uh, those hurting places that sickness that disease that um, hurt that wound we are to bear that for them let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification now it's not talking about people pleasing but it's talking about doing good to those and to edify them to build them up that's why christian uh, sometimes we don't have a good testimony because we want to go to church and we want to shout the walls down and praise the lord and everything but soon as something happens and we don't like you at the restaurant you going off on the waitress something happens with your neighbor you going off on your neighbor everything is a problem always complaining always this always that that's not edifying to your neighbor but you ought to be edifying to your neighbor for even christ pleased not himself but as it is written the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on thee christ died a death to the cross that wasn't his death it was ours he paid the penalty for our sins. Good morning, Angela. He paid the penalty for our sins. Um, but Christ didn't live to please himself. Because uh, at the Garden of Gethsemane, it was a fight between his, the spirit and the flesh. The, uh, what his flesh wanted to do and what he knew the Father sent him to do. It was a fight uh, between uh, the spirit and the flesh. But he did it. He endured the cross not to please himself, but to please the Father. And we need to do treat our brothers and sisters the same to please the Father. And verse four says, "For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope." Uh, this Christian walk is so much easier when you read the Word of God. Uh, some people don't want to read the Word of God because it makes them accountable for some of the things when the Bible says that this does not please God, this does not please God, uh, but this is what pleased God. It makes, you have to come up, you have to meet the mark, you have to come up to the mark, you have to come up to that standard, go to that next level in the Lord. But when you le also learn what God wants you to do, he also shows you how to stand, he shows you how to stick and stay, he shows, he gives you a spirit, of, as my dad called it, stick to it to this, uh, that you can hold on, that you know that God is working things out and that he's able to to accomplish those things in you if you just hold on. But see, a lot of times we don't know this because we don't know the scriptures. Uh, you know, and it really, I love the New Testament, but I love the Old Testament as well. And it really hurts my heart when people try to discount the Old Testament. When the Bible just told you that everything that was written for a time was, was for your learning, for your growth. So you won't repeat the same. So you won't keep doing the things that the children of Israel are doing. That you don't have to be in the wilderness for 40 years. That you don't have to be misled and, and take it into those who are uh, idol worshipers or are not pleasing unto God. That you want to line yourself up with people that are that are not uh, following the Lord. That you may have one mind and one mouth. Glorify God. Oh, I skipped the verse. Uh, now the patience of God and consolation, the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like one minded one toward another, according to Jesus Christ, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are to um the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like minded one toward another. If God is patient with us, if God consoles us, if God keeps us. We should do the same thing to our brother and our sister. We should console them. We should comfort them. We should be patient with them. And it's amazing to me how we want people to be patient with us and our sin. And we're not patient with people in marriage. We want people to be patient with us, but we don't want to be patient with them. Just like this, uh, you can't judge me thing that's been going around. For one, people don't know what judging means. But number two, you're telling me that uh, you don't mean to judge you when I tell you that something is... is incorrect is not pleasing to God according to the Bible but then you gonna judge me because I, I decided to live by the Bible that automatically I hate you no I don't hate you matter of fact I love you when I when I tell you the truth that means I love you when um when I tell you what the word says that means I love you and for you not wanting to be judged to turn around and judge me just because I believe in holiness and believe in living, living according to the word of God it's the same thing but we, our minds are so turned uh, about where people are, are living in a place of offense. But even in that, we are supposed to be patient with them. Um, 
and to have the mind of God towards them. That you, whatever, wherefore, receive you one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. To greet, to greet each other, to want to be around each other, to love each other when we come into our presence. You know, sometimes people aren't the easiest people to be around, but you can greet them with love. And it doesn't, they want people to understand you don't have to be around people 24 7. But when you see them, to love them, to genuinely care for them, when they're in your presence, is what God calls us to do. Good morning, good morning. Now I say that the G that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as is, it is written, you know, according to according to the law. According to the law, um, that was written aforetime. This God bless you. I'm glad I'm glad you enjoy. Um, that this was not uh, originally for the Gentile. It was for the people of God. It was for the Jew. But when Jesus came, it engrafted us all in, the Jew, the Gentile, the Greek, uh, the Samaritan, all of those that would accept Jesus Christ, we were engrafted in. We were taken in. This is not just for the Jew. It's for us. It says, And the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as is written for this cause. I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again, he says, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, lift him up, applaud him, all ye people. We are to uh, we are to lift the Lord up, all people. We are to lift him up, whether you're newly converted or been in, in here for a while. You are to lift up the Lord, to rejoice in him, because um, it puts everything in a different perspective. I talk about praise a lot on here. It puts everything in a different perspective. When you can praise the Lord for what he's done. And it's easier to praise the Lord for what he's done if you read the word of God and know what he's done for you. What he's not, what he's done, but what he's going to do for you. What you are entitled to as a child of God. And it talks about uh, him being the root of Jesse and he shall rise to reign. And the Gentiles in, in him shall the Gentiles trust. We are to trust in an almighty God that cares so much for us. And says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. That you may abound in hope. He, God has given us hope on today through scripture, um, through the word of God. That he reigns, Jesus reigns. He now reigns over just one or two. He reigns over the just as well as the unjust. He is ruling uh, the body of Christ and we are engrafted in. And you know the wonderful thing about the body of Christ is not even uh, in the scripture. But uh, one of my mothers, she uh, passed uh, in April. But she, one time I was really struggling. I was really struggling. And I just felt like giving up. And I didn't feel like I could talk to my pastor about it or talk to anybody in my church about it. Because I don't know, I just didn't feel like I could. And, um, I went to the house and we were sitting um, we were sitting, I, I think we were sitting on the porch. We were sitting on the porch and we were talking. And she said, you know, the beautiful thing about being in the body of Christ is that somebody is always praying for you. They may not know you. They may not even know what they're praying for. But when we obey God, when he calls us to pray, when we intercede for one another, someone is always praying for you. And, you know, and that thing just gave me strength. You know, to some people it may not mean much. But to know that someone, and, and it's so funny because as years went on, uh, one year uh, for a certain time period, I would wake up at 4 in the morning, 3 and 4 in the morning. And I just felt like an uneasy, an uneasiness and an unrest where I just had to pray. And didn't know who I was praying for. Didn't know what I was praying for. But when you start obeying and heeding the unction of God, you know, sometimes when we have these attitude we call them attitudes and mood swings sometimes the lord is laying stuff a heaviness in your heart for someone else and we don't know how to interpret it so we go about our day doing whatever but the lord is called the lord is calling us to pray for one another to uplift one another to bear up one another to uh so that we can make it so that each of us can make it because we all have a time where we're going to go through 
and we don't understand that what we're going through is going to work out for our good. So we need somebody to bear us up. We need somebody to undergird us and lift us up. Amen. We got to praise and thank God for being good on today. Praise and thank Him for just being awesome and mighty and great. Thank God for another day of worship for those of us that worship on Sunday. Um, thank God for how He continues to um, reveal His Word to us. For how He continues to wake us up each and every day with a mind turned towards Him to get in His Word before we head out for the day. I thank you all for supporting this um, Periscope ministry. Thank you for um, tuning in and sharing and for all the hearts and the comments. Amen. It's been quiet these last couple of days, but I have, I, I'm missing Brother Patrick on today. Brother Patrick usually going in on the comments, but I thank you all for joining. Um, feel free to watch and share the replay. If you miss any daily devotions or you're interested in seeing the older devotions, they are on my YouTube channel. And my YouTube channel is Sheetaboo930, S-H-E-E-T-A-B-O-O-930. And that is on YouTube. Feel free to connect with me on social media at Sheetacular or Sheetaboo930. Um, I'll be glad to hear from you. You all have a wonderful and blessed day of worship. I pray that the Lord bless the path of your feet, the work of your hands, and the words in your mouth. And that his blood will cover you and keep you from all hurt, harm, and danger until we meet again on the Periscope. Have a blessed day.